Hi everybody, this is Mark Weitzman. Welcome back to my um, YouTube channel. It's been a while since I uh, made a video, as I, you can see from my video list. The last one I made was March 26th. So today I'd like to do another like weekly blog. Um, I've been fairly busy with um, financial markets. I've made back about... Um, 60% of what I lost last year, so I still have some to go. And um, I'm fairly happy because I'm only like um, less than 50% invested. I'm like 55% in cash. So um, to have made back as much as I've had with such a low um, investment is, is pretty good. And um, case for those who live in the U.S. Um, or who have access to it. I think only U.S. citizens. If you're interested in cash investments, you know, you can, of course, put your money in money market funds and various other things. But I think right now the best place is um, the Treasury Direct site where you buy uh, Treasury bills directly. And um, it's fairly easy to open up an account. And it's fairly easy to do transactions and everything. Um, if you want to see on their site, for instance, you can get like recent auctions of treasury bills. You don't have to bid or anything like that. You just put in an order for the next auction. As you can see, rates have been like uh, pretty good lately at the 5% level for short term. You know, you can get them anywhere from like four weeks to eight weeks to 13 weeks, 26 weeks. These are just T-bills. Of course, you can also buy notes and bonds and all that other and treasury inflation protected securities and um, you know I definitely don't want to give investment advice I'm not an investment advisor or anything like that but just if you have extra cash lying around I found treasury direct to be very convenient um, so other than the financial markets um, I've taken about a month off from physics and I've just decided to do some mathematics that I've neglected for a while and um, I think a couple of videos ago, I, I had this thing about these new books that I bought. I'm trying to understand um, Cohen's and Gödel's proof on the independence of the continuum hypothesis. And this book, together with a follow-up book, uh, New Versions on Set Theory by Kenneth Coonan, I've been reading and making progress and making more progress than I thought. And I've also been rereading many of the books that I read a long time ago, but maybe didn't quite finish or on computability and things like that. And uh, I even found this book. This is a new 25th anniversary edition of uh, Visual Complex Analysis. I have a uh, older version. I don't have the 25th version, but this is a great book because it's not rigorous, it's geometric flavored and everything, and it has covers a lot, let's say two-thirds of what a physicist needs to know on uh, complex analysis, but it's all like, you know, it's all like pictures and everything. That's what I like about it. He, he goes through the pictures and, let me just see if I can get, you know, and he establishes everything via uh, images and everything, and it, it can be made rigorous and everything, but you get the feel of it and the flow of it and it's much, it's, you know, proves things, you know, theorems that otherwise would be difficult to prove. And it covers a lot of things like Mobius transformations, non-Euclidean geometry. And, um, you know, it's, a, it's an easy read compared to most math books with lemmers and proofs and con corollaries and everything like that. This is just a pleasure to read. And yet it will teach you complex analysis, at least the visual aspects of them. And you'll learn a lot. You'll learn a lot in this book. Um, you know, everything's like mappings and things like that. So um, he doesn't quite go into Riemann surfaces. He says that he, the book would have been too big for that. But otherwise, this is like a classic idiosyncratic book on complex analysis that's different than um, any other book. But it covers all of the um, the basics, so I highly recommend it. And I've been said I bought this about a couple of years ago, and I, n I only read one chapter. But now, in, a couple, in about a week or so, I've read through half the book. I got about another three hundred pages to go. 
And um, so um, I've been doing something today just out of boredom with the Ackerman function. Many of you um, might be aware of this function. This is the uh, Wikipedia page. The Ackerman function is um, a classic example of a function that is recursive. And you can think of recursive if you have like a computer science background as being computable. It's easy to write a program to compute it. But it is not primitive recursive. And the difference, as this article explains, between primitive recursive and recursive is that while recursive functions can be computed, they often require what, what you would call to think of as while loops, whereas primitive recursive can all be computed using for loops, meaning you always know how many times you're going to execute the loop as soon as you go into it. It's not like you'll, it could execute different amount of times depending upon certain conditions. So you can also think of this as the difference between a bounded search operator and an unbounded search operator. But the Ackerman function is the classic function. It has a lot of uses in computer science as well. But this is the um, classic function on um, a total function that is recursive but not primitive recursive. Essentially, it's a double recursion, and that's why it's not primitive recursive. But you can read this, um, this whole article. They, they do everything in here. They define it and everything. And, you know, they show you how to compute it or, you know, various computations. They give you values. And, you know, just to show you, like I wrote a very, very short program um, in e on Python. I used my... Um, First, I started with Eclipse and, I, and the PYDEV plugin. And this is the, um, you know, it's just a simple recursive refunction, uh, you know, double function, AMN, and it has three conditions, you know. And, um, and then you can compute it. Now, if you do that, let me, let me run this again. If you do that, you can't see the whole console. Let me show you the whole console. It's going to compute some values, the smaller values, but then it's going to give like a maximum recursion to have exceeded. Python, the default in Python, or at least in the PY Dev Eclipse, is a very small recursion thing, about a um, thousand, I think. So I have these commented out. You can easily increase the recursion length like I just increased it to a billion. I think I can increase it fairly easy to the largest C integer, which I think is like 2.7 billion. When I go beyond that, I'm not sure exactly how to do it. But if I, um, if I run it again, what happens is it keeps running, but eventually the program will crash. Um, and I was kind of surprised by this because if you go, if you go to the uh, page, the Ackerman page, you can see that up to three, it's going to be small values, and then, you know, four zero is going to be thirteen, six five 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 three is going to be four one. You expect it to be able to compute that via recursion, you know especially if I increase the recursion level to a billion. The next one is where I expected it to crash, but it didn't. It crashed on the 65553. So um, it takes a while for it to crash, but it will crash. So what I did was I decided to um, forget about Eclipse and PYDEV, and I went right to the uh, terminal. So um, go to the terminal. Python, and then I just um, copy-pasted this stuff. Um, so that defined my function, and now I'm going to try and do the same thing again, see what happens here.
And uh, so it gave you again that maximum recursion depth exceeded. So I figure I better do the same thing that I did with uh, increasing it. Try and run it again. Now, um, so it's running. Oh, maybe I need. Okay, let me just see. Um, well, when I did this last time, I let it run for a while, and I got a segmentation error, so it did eventually uh, crash. But um, what you can do, as as all you know, computer science isn't my uh, expertise. By the way, here's a Wikipedia page on um, primitive recursive functions. They talk about all the differences and everything. So it might be good to look at that if you want to get a little more understanding of the difference between primitive recursion and recursion. But the... Um, Oh, well, I think it's still running. Um, now, what's interesting is that um, you can get a... Um, oh, I didn't put that page there, but there's a page where it will do like an iterative calculation um, rather than a recursive. We all know that iteration is better than recursion. So let me go back. I programmed this in Eclipse. And um, this is my version of the... I copied this from the Internet. I didn't write it. But um, so this is... A, you, this uses a stack method of computation. And um, so let me... Um, Go back to my terminal, which, okay, there it is. So you get a, um, let me show you. Eventually you'll get a, uh, I can't show it to you on this. Um, I need to scroll this a little bit. Okay. So you can see it, segmentation fault, Python. So um, eventually you'll get a segmentation fault. Exactly what causes that error with the recursion, I'm not sure. But um, in any event, let me show you how to do it a, a cool way. Which I got you know off the internet. Um, now let me... Um, Okay. Let's see if I can get this to work. Sometimes when I do the copy paste here, when there's blank lines, it doesn't work. Uh, let's see how this goes. Yeah, I got to. Um, Let me do it a little at a time. <sighs> okay. Let me 
just show you a clean window. You know what, I'm just going to show this to you in Eclipse. So when I run this in Eclipse, because it runs in Eclipse, um, I'll show it to you right now. See, now um, show you the full console. Look how it computed everything. It, it got that, that, and it even got the next one. If you scroll this window, believe it or not, there's like, you know, 2 to the 65533 is like 20,000 decimal digits or something. And it has it all here, 20,000, presumably 20,000 decimal digits. So it's working on this. The program's still running, but it's never going to get to the, uh, to the next one, A4, 3. You can forget about it because, as you can see from this, um, a four comma three is uh, you know we computed the uh, two to the s four two was two to the six five five three six minus three. The next one is going to be two to that exponent two to the two to the two six five five three six. So it's going to have that many that 20,000 digit number, that many digits. So it's um, not enough memory on my machine, even though I've got 64 gigabytes on this machine. So um, anyway, that's what I've been wasting my time on, um, fooling around with some various things in set theory, logic, computation, some complex analysis. I like to take a month off from physics here and there and just do some math. I got plenty that I need to catch up on. But I do have a whole course on group theory that I am putting together, and I need to um, to get back to that. So I'm, I've promised many times, but I'm going to promise again that I think my next few videos will be like on group theory. We'll get through representations and all the things, nice things, easy things to establish with finite groups, and then go on to Lie groups. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.